Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to use Replit, Node.js, the SendGrid API to send some email. We're going to integrate the Stripe customer portal with Checkout. Um, this is sort of building on a previous episode where we built a uh, donation flow with Replit and Stripe Checkout. So we're going to kind of like modify that REPL a little bit to use uh, the customer portal. So Rachel has been in some of our uh, live streams. She also left a comment here on this video. She says, if you're down, it would be super helpful to see a video around uh, setting up auth in a tool like Stitch. So we're not gonna use Stitch today for a couple different reasons, but um, so that it will, she says, so, so that it'll work with the customer portal, preferably in Node. So we're gonna use Node today. Maybe you can just do a quick demo and replit as you did for the variable checkout prices. It helped, uh, helped a ton. Okay, so the reason we're not gonna use Stitch is that they don't have a way to attach sort of like metadata or outside data to the user objects that they have. Um, so the whole key to implementing the customer portal is storing the Stripe customer ID alongside some authenticated user. So you need some form of authentication. And so what I want to do today is we're just going to use like sort of magic link authentication. So we're going to send someone an email and that will be kind of like what they, uh, what we use as a, our form of authentication. So I'm going to go down, I think variable checkout, I can't remember. Um, variable checkout, I can't remember if it was this one um, that we did in the past, like for, for a previous video or not. Yeah, checkout donations. I think this might have been it. Okay, so in this, um, yeah, all right, let's make this a little bigger. Okay, so in this REPL, we're gonna actually fork this. So I'm gonna click on the name and say fork, and we're gonna call this checkout customer portal node or something, I don't know. Um, and that's gonna create a new REPL for us that we can play around with. And we need a couple of things. So first let's kind of just like go through what we've already got set up. So we're installing Express, we're initializing an Express app, we're gonna use that, we're using Resolve. We're installing the Stripe node client library to make API calls to Stripe on the server. Um, we're using the Express JSON middleware. We're also gonna say app.use express.url encode encoded. I don't know if it's express URL encoded, uh, encoded. Um, that's going to let us send just like raw form data instead of having to use JavaScript um, on the front end. And then we have a success page or yeah, this, this is just going to render back an index.html page, which we'll see here on the right. And then um, right now the HTML page just has an amount and we click donate. Um, and then our success page, when we come back, we just show like a blob of JSON for the checkout session. And here's where we're creating the checkout session. We're pulling the donation amount out of this form. And on the form, we can actually simplify this quite a bit now. So um, we're using our publishable key to initialize an instance of Stripe. This is our form, it's super simple. It's just a, an amount that we can enter here. And then we were using JavaScript on the client. Uh, in fact, we don't even need Stripe.js on the client uh, anymore. And we were passing like all of this stuff down we actually don't need any of this. So we can like rip all of this out because we're just gonna pass back form encoded. Um, at the time of the recording of the last video, we didn't support server-side redirect for checkout. So I'm just gonna blow all of that away. And then we're gonna replace this form. Instead of having the ID, we're just gonna give it a, um, an action and that's gonna be create checkout and a method so that we're sending a post request back to the server. Now, in addition to an amount, we're also going to collect the email address. And the reason is that we want, um, in this case, we want to be able to like log back in as the user or like associate some sort of checkout session back with an existing user. So this is going to be an email input. It doesn't have a step. And instead of ID here, we actually need to change this to, um, uh, an, uh, to a name, to the name, name attribute. Uh, and the name for this one is going to be email and uh, we still have this donate button. Let's change that to like subscribe or something because donate doesn't really make sense in the in like the concept of the customer portal per se because we, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're like, uh, I don't know, even amount is odd. Like let's take out amount. We'll just take in the email address and we're gonna say subscribe and then maybe above this we'll say like, H1, like my awesome service. And then you're gonna, I don't know, pay like um, $10 a month for my awesome service. And yeah, sure. 
Okay, whatever. All right, so now we've got something that looks like this. We're gonna pay $10 a month. We're gonna enter our email and click subscribe. And what we wanna do is when we call create checkout session now on the back end, we're gonna pull off the email address. And we need to do a couple things. Like, first of all, in practice, you would um, like pull the, the authenticated user from the database. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna use nodes, or I'm sorry, Replit's database thing. So they have like a node, node database. So you pull in at Replit slash database, and then you can create a new instance of the database. And then the way that we like, uh, get and set from it is just by calling like db.get and db.set. It's a super simple like key value pair database. And so when someone gives us their email, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to look them up in the database. So we're gonna say like const customer ID is await db.get and we're gonna pass in their email address. Now if they're, if they, we've never seen this person before, they've never logged in, it's kind of like a new user, then we're gonna not have an email address, or not, we're not gonna get back a customer ID, so a customer ID. So if there's no customer ID, what we wanna do, I'm gonna change that to a let. What we actually wanna do is we wanna create a new customer, and that's gonna be using the Stripe API. So we'll call stripe.customers.create, and we'll pass in their email address that we just got from the form that's gonna create a customer with that specific email. And then we can use that customer ID and save it in the database. So we're gonna say db.set um, uh, email, and the value is going to be customer.id. That's just gonna make like kind of a hash of email points at Stripe customer ID in this database, very simple. And both the get and set methods for the database are going to return promises. So we always want to await these. That bit me when I was like playing around with the database for the first time. Okay, and then what we want to do after that is we want to set our local variable for the customer ID equal to customer.id so that we can use it down below when we create our checkout session. So when we create the checkout session, this is like what the customer sees when they redirect the payment flow. Uh, we want to pass in the specific customer ID so that this checkout session is associated with this specific user and that's tied to their email address and we can kind of like keep everything sort of in sync. Since this recording, we actually don't need this payment method types thing anymore because now we have automatic payment methods, which is way better. Um, okay, so instead of like hard coding the success URL here, this is like the old REPL. Um, we can, I don't know, we can like look at the environment and figure out the URL. So how do we want to do this? Let's create a new JavaScript file here called console.js. And this will just let us play around with the console. So I'm going to console.log process.env. And then in the shell, I can say node console, and that will just like print out all of the different stuff. Um, so we have the REPL slug, and you'll notice that this REPL slug checkout dash customer dash portal dash node is the first subdomain in like our big domain here. So we want to use that. Um, okay, so the idea is that we're gonna like kind of build up a URL here. So let's go back up to the top here. And we're just gonna say const base URL is equal to, or maybe like domain is equal to. Um, and then we're gonna have process dot env dot this thing. And then we're gonna like, we'll add all the different components here. So I think the next one is, I don't know, can we find, okay, so my name, REPL owner. So process dot env dot REPL owner. And then it's REPL and then it's co. And then we're gonna join these by dot so that we have a domain. And then we can build our base URL off of that using HTTPS, colon slash slash, and then the domain. And that should give us sort of like a base URL that we can use when we're building or when we're constructing these other sort of uh, URLs. So now our success URL here, we can make that much better by saying, let's just use the like base URL. And this will make it, should make it a little bit easier for y'all to copy it and then use it if you need to, or if you want to. Um, and then we can say, I don't know, base URL and cancel. I mean, we should probably have a cancel situation also, but whatever. Also, you can pass in that checkout session ID, like in the URL that we're 
specifying as the success URL, we're going to give this checkout session ID, which will be populated with the ID of the checkout session when they're redirected back. And that's nice because then we can use that for um, refetching the checkout session in success or cancel case, either case. All right, line items. This is all the stuff that they're actually going to pay for. Um, in this case, what we're doing is we were taking in the amount and then doing a bunch of stuff with it, but let's just pass in $10. And we'll say USD and the product data is test. And in the case of a subscription, which is really like the reason that we want to use the customer portal generally is if we have someone who's subscribed, we want to have some recurring interval thing that tells them uh, interval that they're going to pay um, this much per month or per year, per week, per day, et cetera, et cetera. The mode in this case is going to be subscription and the submit type. I'm just going to remove that for now. And then instead of sending back the session ID, we're going to like redirect to um, the session.url. And I think, I don't know, I think that might work. Let's go give it a whirl. Uh, we have to do this in a new window because we can't use it inside of, um, like inside of the replit iframe thing, it doesn't work. Okay, I'll say wave at CJAV dev and click subscribe. Cannot post to create checkout. Why not? Oh, create session. We'll change that. All right, go back, refresh. Um, wave at cjav.dev. Do I need to restart the server? I think I do. All right, that's annoying. All right, let's go back uh, again. Hmm, couldn't hmm. create checkout. That's like totally a thing, huh? Let's see. Wave at cjav.dev. Boom, okay, I think it's doing something. Oh, you know what it's doing? It's failing because I don't have my API keys set, I think, right? Uh, yeah, we don't have our API key set. So we need to go to secrets and we need to make sure that our environment variables are set. And there's one right up here that we're trying to use to initialize Stripe. Um, so I'm gonna use my secret key there so that that is on the server. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is, uh, this is like, yeah, uh, if it crashes like that, we, we don't have very good error handling right now, but that's fine. Wave at cjav dev. Okay. Now we're redirected to Stripe checkout and we can see that we're going to pay $10 per month. Here's our email address and all of our information, blah, blah, blah. Let's use our test card number. Okay, uh, uh, Jenny Rosen, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know, let's see. Let's make it me. All right, well, one, two, three, four, five. And I do wanna save my information for faster checkout next time. And I do I wanna give you my email? Sure. Hopefully that's not texting a real person. This is in test mode, so it shouldn't, so. All right, we're redirected back to the success page. Uh, you can see up here in the URL, we have the ID of the checkout session, which we used to fetch all of the things. Um, what's really cool is we should have a customer ID in here somewhere. So this is our customer ID that was associated with that user. Um, and if everything worked right, then we should have saved that customer ID in the database. So let's go back over to our console thing and try to fetch that from the database. So again, we're gonna require the database thingy, initialize a new instance of it, and then call get um, on the key, which in this case is going to be the email address, wave at cjav.dev. And again, this is DB and we need to await it. Um, or we can just, yeah, I don't know, then uh, console.log value. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, go back over to our shell and run node console again. Okay. So we did get back a customer ID. That's fantastic. So now we have, basically we have a database that contains the ID of the customer related to that email address. This is what we're going to use for authentication. Let's talk about the send grid part of this. So send grid has uh, an email API. Um, and they have this quick start for Node.js, and I'll put a link to this in the description of the video. Um, and what we see here is like, once you've got your SendGrid account set up, you can create API keys for it. 
And those API keys, in the case of this example, need to be stored in an environment variable called sendgrid API key. So I'll come over here and go to our secrets. I'm going to add a new API key, and this is where I'm going to drop it in. So I added my sendgrid API key. Uh, OK, so now what we should be able to do is go back to our files. Let's follow the guide here. Um, we've already verified our sender. We're on the right versions, blah, 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 blah. Uh, what's really cool about Replit is we don't actually have to run this npm install thing. It sees like, oh, if you have a new dependency, then it should npm install it. So really what we want to do is just grab all of this section and we're going to come up to the top here, dump it in. And the first part is it's installing the send grid dependency. The next part is it's setting our API key using the environment variable we just set. Then it's creating a new message object with the two. Um, and then it's calling sgmail.send for that message. Um, so we can, this is like the part that we actually want to put inside of some new billing portal thing. So let's create a new route. So we're going to say app.post, um, I don't know, slash customer portal. And what this is going to do is it's going to send an email to some user's email address. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to like um, accept the email from the user, um, look up the customer in the DB, uh, customer, and like if there's a customer object, then send them an email, uh, like, I don't know, otherwise, um, like show an error or something. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Like when I do double space, even in like these web inputs, it's adding a period like, you know, from same sort of situation from iMessage. I don't know if there was like an update or something to Chrome. It's very annoying. All right. So we're going to accept the email from the, from the user input. Um, this is going to be like const email is uh, equal to rec.body. So we're just going to pull it off of the form. Also, like we don't even have a form yet. We'll just add another form to index.html that has yet another email. And we'll just call this one like customer portal. Keep it really simple. And then instead of subscribe, we like manage um, billing or something. I don't know, that should be fine. Uh, and then let's just make sure that that is exactly the same as what we have here. Okay, that looks good. All right, the next step is to look up the customer in the database. So again, we're gonna say like, const uh, customer ID is equal to await db.get email. And hopefully there's a customer ID. If there's not a customer ID, then we're going to like respond with, I don't know, some error message, uh, message like uh, unable to find you in the DB. Okay, and then we'll return early. Otherwise, if there is a customer object, um, what we want to do is, I guess this is the otherwise case. Um, if there is a customer object, then what we want to do is we want to send them this email. So we are going to use the email that they gave us as the to address. We're going to use the from address as, I don't know, wave at cjab.dev. Sure. The subject is going to be um, manage your billing. We don't actually need, so text and HTML. So. Uh, for every email that you receive, there is, is a possibility that your email client, like Gmail or Outlook or, I don't know, Thunderbird or <laughs> something, uh, is going to be a text-only client and, like, just read the text version of the email, or it'll be an HTML client that can, like, read the HTML version of the email. I don't even send the text ones anymore. Like, I just assume that everyone's got some super fancy uh, email that is modern and doesn't <laughs> doesn't need the raw text version, but whatever. It's like a good practice to send the text version to if you've got a big application, whatever. Okay, so we're gonna send, the HTML contents of the email is just gonna be um, a link, and the link is going to be directly to the customer portal. Um, if there is a customer object, send them an email with customer portal link. Okay, so in order to create the customer portal link, we need to use Stripe again. We're gonna call portal or like session is equal to Stripe, nope, await Stripe dot 
billing portal dot sessions dot create. And this is just going to take in the customer ID again and the return URL. And this is why uh, we made that base URL thing uh, because it's handy to just come back and say, I don't know, like uh, we'll just add like I'm back to the query string or something to say that we're, we're back. And then we want to use this sessions URL property as the uh, your, the link that we're going to send in the email. Now I'm just going to assume this thing works. And if it does, then we're going to res dot send message, like check your email. Okay. Stop. Uh, we'll come back over here. We're going to come back to the normal page and why isn't it loading? Let's see our console. Uh, Trying to start, it's starting, it npm installed. Okay, so see how it npm installed SendGrid? Super convenient. Okay, so now when we say uh, manage billing, we're gonna put in wave at cjav.dev, which was our customer email that we used. Don't be confused, I, I'm, yeah, I used like a couple of the same names. And then it says, check your email. All right, so this is the email we received. It says manage your billing, this came from SendGrid and all it has is this link. This link is only gonna uh, last for five minutes, but we can email it to them so they can click on it and then see their, their customer portal. So here they are, um, they've got their email, they can like update their plan, they can change their plan. Uh, yeah, I'm actually, I'm a student and I have three of these, confirm, whatever. Like now, they're, now that they're in the customer portal, everything's, everyone's happy. And after they're done going through the customer portal stuff, they can say, oh, I want to return to the demo. And they're, com they're coming back to the demo and here they see I'm back. So uh, yeah, so that was, it was super fun. The, the SendGrid API is so simple and straightforward. And I had some issues with it with Heroku, but wow, like when you use it directly, just create your own account, create API keys, and then follow their quick start guides. It works like a charm. Uh, Replit again is, yeah, humming along, great. Uh, today, yeah, it seemed to seem to like just crank for us. So this is awesome. Uh, and I think that's it. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully that was useful, Rachel. And if anyone has questions about this, or if you want us to make videos about other topics, please let us know down in the description and otherwise we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.